Good morning, everyone, students, teachers, parents, and welcome to this Dinya Wahda live event. Good morning. I'm Desiree Falzon. And I'm Victor Falzon. And we're both teachers with the Dinya Wahda program, which is created by Birdlight Malta and run together with the Education Directorate. Today's subject is what's for lunch? Yum, yum. <laughs> that means we're going to talk about food, but of course not food, what we're going to eat today, but what animals will so eat. So don't today. expect any recipes. <laughs> it's all about food in nature. Hmm. Maybe we should do a program with recipes, but anyway, that's for another time. Yes. We're Caterpillar. about nature. That's Dinya Wata. Caterpillar pate. Uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. forget that. So we start and you know that you can ask us questions about nature and also reply to the questions that we ask you from the side panel. You've got a Q&A question and answer and just type your question at the bottom. And uh, if you want us to know who you are, put your name in. Right, we don't have any questions left over from last week, so we're going to switch immediately to live session. You'll see a pause until I share the screen. OK. And there we go. We start with today's mystery object. As you know, we always start with a bit of a close up of something in nature. What do you think this one is? Well, so that's not the mothership from Independence Day. <laughs> <laughs> Seen from below. <laughs> you have a very fertile imagination. No, it's not. And it's not your grandmother's chandelier either. That is something in nature. So it's a plant or an animal and it's only a close up. It's, it's a close up. It. It's a part of it. What do you think it is? Mm, that's the, I think this one is a bit easy. Could mm. be in the Maltese program. They got it immediately, although we did have some creative answers and good, we good. love it when you're being creative. The more imagination, the better. Indeed. We need a lot of imagination to heal so this world. Write, write your answers on the, on the question and answer page uh, on, the, on the section on your, um, uh, on your screen. And uh, at the end, towards the end of the program, we'll give you the answer of what this mysterious object was and see who guessed. OK, so would you like to check, Vic, see if you're getting any answers so that we can, as soon as answers start coming in, we can, are you on new? Yes, already coming oh, in. All right, good. Answers are already coming in. Good, yes. right. Good. So we can move on. Mm -hmm. And our subject for today, what's for lunch? There's a bird over there, it's a shorebird, and it's picking up something which it's about to eat. Looks delicious. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> it depends who you are, I guess. Do you remember we used this picture last week? For those of you who are watching us, this is a picture of a tree, a plant basically, and it's full of leaves. Now, we also said that plants feel, and they feel light. They feel when it's light and when it's warm, and they also feel when it's cold. In fact, in winter, in autumn, they go to sleep because they feel cold and they feel that there isn't enough light anymore. So plants need and they like light. So why do they need all this light? Is it for maybe getting a nice tan? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's for sunbathing, yeah. Absolutely. That she looks very happy there. Absolutely. Sipping her piña colada there. Absolutely, on a day. I like this way. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> nice on day. Bit retro, but nice. Anyhow, no, it's not because they need to sunbathe. What's it all about? Yeah, they look happy. <laughs> well, this one is happy too. Let's see what happens in real life. So a plant to me is a bit like a factory because in all the parts of the plant, it takes in ingredients to make something the way you would do in a factory. From its roots, it pulls up water, which there is in the soil. Together with that water, Nutrients come in, nutrients, good stuff, things that help you grow. And they will pull them up towards the leaves. But something else is going on in the leaves. The leaves also get ingredients and they get it from the air. And that ingredient is carbon dioxide, written as CO2. Carbon dioxide is a gas and it comes in all the little holes that there are on leaves, usually on the underside. Carbon dioxide is also the gas that we breathe out. We don't want it, but plants use it. It is one of their ingredients. Now, the most important bit coming up here. We said that plants need light. Why? Sunlight makes it happen. It is the engine in the factory. Because inside leaves, there are all these special little things, this special stuff. And this special stuff, these little cells, they can 
get all the ingredients together and with the power from the sun, they can make food. And food makes the plant grow. And when a plant grows, it makes more stem and more leaves. So a plant that is growing uses the sunlight and the ingredients it puts together, those special things in the leaves, and it makes food. And there are many types of plants all over the world, and they're all different shapes and sizes and textures. Some are shiny, some are flat, some don't live long, some make seeds in the form of berries, fruit, some have flowers in the shape of a ball, like the white ones, and some have pretty little um, purple or yellow flowers. And there are even strange plants, like the one that look like a lot of little circles there, like a lot of plates balanced on each other. You know, that's an underwater plant, it's an alga. It's a seaweed, yes, it's a tiny one, it's growing on rocks. Very, 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 very delicate, beautiful, beautiful things, yes. Beautiful. And all these plants have a lot of different shapes and sizes, fat, thin, long, rough, smooth, and all the animals in the world need plants. They need plants and there are so many different kinds of animals because there are different kinds of plants and every animal knows how to eat its plants. Hey, 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 I think you're huh? making a mistake there. Why? Right? I'm quite sure that some of those animals don't eat plants. There's a frog, I know that they, they eat insects. Yes. There's a bat, I'm quite sure they eat mosquitoes. Yes. Uh, okay, so okay. They, All right. Okay. So uh, are you, you're mistaken. You're mistaken. Not really. You're right, but it doesn't mean I'm mistaken because, well, we'll see. Just bear with me. Wait a minute. We were saying that there are lots of different plants and animals that eat plants have different ways of eating them. Let's start with this one. I think you all recognize the snail. A snail has a tongue like sandpaper and it scrapes and scrapes until it makes a hole. You can see holes in the leaves over there. The scraping is the tongue movement and that's how it manages to put food in its mouth. This tongue is so good that Different types of snails can even eat that moss, you know, that very, very small, thin carpet of green you see sometimes on wet stones. They can even scrape that off, like the snail on the right is doing. And that's one way of eating plants. If you have a bony lip or just a bone underneath the bit that's sharp, you can scrape off from water, for example. Um, this is a pond. And there is alga growing on the pond and they don't have a, a sandpaper like tongue, but they do have a kind of bony ridge, a bony uh, strip. They can scrape off with it. These are tadpoles, of course. Let's see what we've got here. These two have teeth. They have a bony part in their mouth and they're eating plants. These fish are underwater and they're scraping alga off. Look and at this, this guy. crab, yeah, look what he's doing. I think he dropped all his food and he's picking up the bits now. No, that's <laughs> how he eats. He uses his, his, uh, his hands like forks and he pops them into his mouth. Very well educated he is. Cellulite foot. Cellulite foot, yes. Mm -hmm. And then there are these kind of insects. Most of them are beetles and they eat by chewing. You can see the one on the left and he's chewed off the end bit of that leaf. The leaf isn't thanking him, but there are a lot, a lot of leaves and plants are very fast with making leaves. And so insects can live. And by biting off it, you can see the very strong mouth over there. And here's another animal that bites off the edges of leaves. Let's watch it. We have a bit of a film here of a caterpillar of a cabbage white. Yes. See how it's nibbling, 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 nibbling,
and related to us more closely because he's a mammal. And he eats because he's got teeth and teeth are very good for biting off. In fact, this rabbit is pulling off whole bits of branches and it can munch and munch and munch those leaves away. Now, this animal is really cool because it's so small, it can live inside the leaf. It can live between the layers like a sandwich and it's eating the middle bit of the sandwich. You can see exactly where it's passed, can't you? Can you see that yellow trail? That's where it has eaten away the middle of the leaf and it stays there all its life until it hatches. And that's called a leaf miner. Mm, must be nice living inside food. Uh-huh. Mm. Don't you wish you could do it? Oh, yeah. yes. What would you do? <gasps> Look, what? What's ah, this? <laughs> that's me um, deep inside the pizza there. Oh, my God. No. Eating all the mozzarella. No I'd way. I'd be so happy there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't pass the front door if you did that. Oh, well, it's a nice dream. <laughs> yeah, you have to be as small as a leaf miner. And well, it wouldn't be pizza either. It must be a gigantic pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Very. <laughs> Let's get serious again, shall we? Sorry about that. No problem. We have now two other kinds of animals here that eat their insects as well, that eat because they have a tube that can pierce, that can punch a hole in the leaf and suck it, suck up the juices. So you can see the one on the left and the one on the right has got the tube going in and it's about to stick it into the leaf and suck it up. The one on the right is called the leaf hopper and is very tiny. And of course, plants don't just make leaves with the food they make. They also make flowers. And we have a bee there collecting pollen from the flowers. And inside flowers, as we've already seen in previous, in, in, uh, in features before, the Nyawada life features, we've seen that even the nectar inside the flower is food. The plant make that, makes that too. And of course, once the flowers are done, seeds happen. And then there are animals who eat seeds. So you see, there is so much going on in a plant and there are so many animals with different ways that eat them. Let's take a look at that again, this time in a drawing. So first we had the plant taking sunlight and the ingredients it got from the air and from the soil to make food, which it put into its leaves. And then we had the leaf, flower, nectar, seed eaters. And we've got one of them here. So it's a butterfly. So what's that arrow, that red arrow? What does it mean? That arrow is does telling it mean me... the plant eats the butterfly? Mm, that would be interesting. But no, that's not the way it works in nature. The, the red arrow is telling me where the nutrition is going. The energy inside the plant, the nutrition, the good stuff that makes you grow, when it's eaten, goes to the animal that eats it. So the arrow is telling me where the, where the energy is going, and that is called a food chain. I'm sure you've heard this word before, a chain, because you start with one thing and then another one links onto it, catches onto it. Now, there's more in the food chain coming up. You see, some animals don't have to work very hard for their food because they have tricks. This crab spider there, called a crab because of the way its arms are, have the right trick. They are the same color as the background flower that they stay in. In comes a pollinator, an animal who eats plants, and all the spider has to do is grab it. Of course, the pollinator, the plant eater, didn't see it because of the trick. And the, and the spider didn't have to work very hard, like this one. This has another trick, but all it has to do is spin a web, stay between flowers, and when the plant eaters come, they will stick in the web and the spider will eat them. Just wrap them up like a packed lunch and eat them whenever you're hungry. Some other animals that eat plant eaters have to work harder for a living. The lizard on the left has to run around and it's a very fast runner because it's chasing beetles and flies that land near plants. So it's also staying near plants, but it's not eating the plant itself. The wasp on the right, um, it seems to have the head, I'm not sure, it looks like the head of a caterpillar and a bit of a caterpillar. That tells me that the wasp has young because the wasp itself is a pollinator, it eats pollen, but it needs to feed its children, its young 
um, animals. So it will go near plants, on plants, and look for bits of animals to carry, animals actually to carry, and then carry them along in bits. Here we have two more animals that look for plants because among the plants you will have, for example, grasshoppers, like the bird on the left, who is an insect eater. And of course, it will look for plants because that's when you find insects. The one on the right is called a kingfisher, and you can see why. With that long, sharp beak, it's very good for catching fish. Now, here's an interesting bird. I know what this bird is. Tell I think me. Tell everyone me. does. What do you think? It's a flamingo. And why isn't it pink? Because I think it is still a young bird. That's right. Now, Although look at this. Quite, it's quite big. But it is uh, big, but it's, but it's not old young. enough to be pink. Yes. Yeah. So, over here, look how the flamingo eats. Well, isn't he drinking? No, he's taking in water, but he's not drinking it. Because inside the water, you've got little animals like shrimps and things right and things. Yeah, yeah yeah they will stick on the tongue and the flamingo will throw the water out you can see it's throwing the water out it's not drinking it and there you go hmm. and that's how a flamingo will so eat. he actually never sees his food this guy doesn't need to he, he can feel it, it with his tongue and yes. <clears throat> yeah and gulp nice now we go underwater and we'll find the same thing so in the sea here we have snails that eat alga that's plants but then you have other snails that eat the snails that eat the plants in fact this one on the left here can you see the picture there are two snails the one in the middle the small one is being eaten by the larger one poor thing it didn't get away but well it's food isn't it on the right here we have what are called soft corals soft corals open out and trap any passing animals uh, that, that are brought by the sea currents and they pop them into their mouths. And here's an animal. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's really, really cool to watch. Did you recognize mm, it? Seen from above. This is a strange angle here. Very strange angle. We've met this animal in, um, in other episodes, haven't we? Yes, you saw this, didn't you, Vic? You, oh, yes. You took these photos. Really yes. great. Yes, Let, yes. Let's see what's happening here. So on the left, we have the chameleon's head a bit of his body there, and on top, the tongue is starting to come out. So what's that yellow stuff at the end? That is the sticky bit, because it shoots it out, like there, now the chameleon's on the right. Lock. And zot. Gotcha. On the left, you can see some yellow and black stripes. That's a butterfly. And because the tip of its tongue is sticky, the butterfly is pulled back into the chameleon's mouth. So the chameleon there is being a predator. All these animals we've seen have been predators. And here's another predator. This is called a praying mantis. Praying because it eats prey. And the word praying mantis mm -hmm. is written actually with an A. Because it, when it holds its arms close to its head, it's like it's praying. <laughs> That's not really play, praying, it's waiting for for a bee to turn up or a grasshopper or, or another praying mantis. And look at those hooks on its legs. So mm. once it folds its legs inside, it doesn't have a tongue to shoot out, but it does have very good hands. Because when you have long hands and you fold them like that, you can shoot them out. The bee won't know what's, what's coming, what hit it. So it will grab it, pull it back and well, start munching. And the bee is history. So a praying mantis uses camouflage and stays inside plants again. Now, here's an animal that's very hard to see. Actually, there are two animals here. On the left, the bigger animal is a mouse. A big mouse in this countryside, it's a rat. And on the right, with its leg over the animal, is a weasel. It's very hard to say a weasel because they're shy animals, but they're very, very fast and very good at catching prey. Wow, that's a rare photo there. It's a very rare photo. Our friend David took this and it was just by the by the road and he managed to catch it in action. The weasel there is a small mammal and it's a predator. So we continue now the food chain. We saw that the energy from the plant passed into the plant eater, the butterfly. 
And now we've just been looking at predators. So here we've got a spider as a predator and the energy passes on to the spider. So the food chain is growing and the energy that the plant made is going long places, isn't it? And now we have another link in the chain. The predators that eat the predators. The dragonfly there is about to be eaten by a bee eater. The dragonfly, you know, catches flies and mosquitoes as it passes through the air. You can see its legs there up in the air. <laughs> Maybe it's trying to escape from that, uh, from that beak there. It's trying to turn a uh, somersault in the air. And this means that predators also get eaten by predators. Here's another one. It's a falcon. In fact, it's called a red-footed falcon. And it's eating, it's very hard to see, but these, these falcons eat lizards, small animals like that. Mm -hmm. And it's got a, a bit of insect. it left, or a large insect, it's got a bit of it left in its foot there. So that is a predator eating a predator, because if so it's eating a lizard, lizards catch flies and beetles. Mm, so it's another predator of a predator. Mm -hmm. It eats in the air, eh, this guy, while flying. Mm. This strange looking bird is called a spoon bill. Bill means beak, and you can see that its beak is in the shape of a spoon at the end. Now, interestingly, at the very bottom of the beak, you can see a frog's leg. That frog was in the water, and the spoon bill knows exactly what to look for. So it's picking up the frog and is about to eat it. And as you know, frogs eat flies. So here again, we have a predator, the spoonbill eating a predator, the frog. So let's see how, what that looks like in the food chain. There. And look what a long way the energy that one plant makes can go. It passes to the plant eater, to the first predator and to the second predator. My goodness, how useful, how important mm, plants so, are. So now I understand what you said at the beginning, that all animals need plants. You see? Even though the chiff chaff here, this, this little bird here, doesn't mm -hmm. eat plants, and the spider doesn't eat plants, but what happens if that plant disappears? All the rest of the chain would break yeah, down, yeah, yeah. would the disappear. The butterfly wouldn't be there, and so the spider won't have anything to eat, and the bird won't have anything to eat. Exactly. That's why it's, a, it's called a chain, isn't it? Exactly. Because if it breaks, if, the, if, the, if one of those uh, animals there break off, um, are not there. Then the, the rest whole, can't the eat. The the we saw chain, how exactly. everybody eats in different ways. So if you remove somebody in the chain before you, then you, you, you probably don't have the mouth, or you don't know how to catch whatever came before you. So chains are very important. Now, the thing is this. Oh, hang on. No, we've got more left. More to see. Let's see what we've got here. Ah, now when predators catch food, there are always opportunists, a long word that simply means people who don't do the work and use other people's work. So what's happening here? You can see that the spider is very annoyed at something. I uh, didn't manage to stop it in time there. So what's happening here? You have the spider who has caught an insect, probably a bee, and wrapped it up in silk, waiting for later. But on top of that, uh, that packet, there are little flies, and they've come to take the food that the, the spider has caught. Look at them again. Yes, it's all full of flies. They're See? wanting to taste what's inside. There. And the spider is so annoyed that her, her good work, her precious work, is going to somebody no, she else. She doesn't want anyone stealing her breakfast. That she's she? hitting the, the packet of food yeah, trying to try to and get rid of them. <laughs> but they're used to it. And here's another predator. So the octopus is munching there. Can you see it? It's munching a snail and stuffing the bits into his mm, mouth. We can't see it because the, the beak, the, the mouth is on the underside. Of course. And octopus have the same problem. There's always a fish, you see that one with stripes, hanging about, waiting to catch bits of food that the octopus missed. There's another octopus, and there it is again, that's called a comber. And there's a comber hanging by to see if there's any bits the octopus missed. And eventually the octopus gets fed up and leaves. Probably more of me than of the comber. So if we look at that food chain, 
It's full of animals that eat animals and other animals that hang by and wait for the predators to drop bits and take those bits. But what happens when the predators die and when anything dies? Does that food get wasted? Not at all. Here we see a fish in the sea that has died. And here come the cleaners, scavengers. Animals, these are bearded fireworms that eat dead plants and animals, animals actually. And is it disgusting? Not at all. If they didn't do it, we'd be kilometers high in, in rubbish, in dead animals. But there's always somebody who's cleaning. Here's an, here, is an, here are other cleaners. Here we have a woodlouse. Woodlice come out at night and they find uh, dead plants, dead leaves, dead bits of bark, and they clear them up and they turn them back into nutrients into the soil. And on the right is a cousin of the woodlouse. It's a type of woodlice that you find near the sea, on the rocks at the surface. They run very fast. And they're also eating dead plants, algae. What do we have here? Oh, we have the famous scavengers of all, ants. They found a bee here, and within minutes, they cleared it up. They start first breaking off bits so they can carry them. Here's a leg on the way home. And there's a bit of another leg, perhaps, bits of wings. And eventually, they carry the whole animal. The stronger ones carry the whole animal. Within five minutes, it was gone because I was filming this one. So if we take a look at the food chain, we've seen much, many more animals than just one line, haven't we? What does that look like in reality, in real life? Let's get smaller a bit so we can fit in everybody else. And voila. Wow. What a mix up there. Not at all. Everybody mm. knows exactly who is going to eat. Mm, so I can follow, look, from the plant I can follow into the butterfly. Mm -hmm. And the butterfly is the plant, right? And the butterfly is eaten by the spider. And by the chameleon. No, okay. So the plant is eaten by the butterfly. Mm -hmm. The butterfly is eaten by a dragonfly uh -huh. down there. And the dragonfly is, in, is eaten by the bee eater. Mm -hmm. And the bee eater is eaten by the fog in there, by the peregrine. Wow. But it's Another not the only thing that eats the butterfly. That's not just one chain. Here yeah? you've got a whole mix up of chains. You've got a chameleon who also eats the butterfly. And mm -hmm. the chameleon gets is eaten, eaten by, by a snake. snake. And the snake gets eaten by, by the weasel. The weasel <laughs> who, who also eats and it goes on and on and, and, on, on, and, on. and on and on. You see how important it is not to kill animals, actually. Because when you do that, you are breaking the chains. And all the chains go back to, what is it? Plants. plants. Without plants, there would be no other life on Earth. How important it is to leave plants, to not cut them by the side of the road, to not cut trees. So much life, everything depends on it. And where would we be as humans without all the animals? We'd die as well, actually, because we need them too. Now, this isn't quite a chain, is it? It's uh, a chain is a single line. Mm. So that word food chain, the word chain doesn't doesn't quite cut it, does it? Mm -hmm. Actually, it's more like a food web. Yes, it's true. It's and like when a whole net there, a whole net, network, yes. and it's also called the web of life. And this is what they mean by the web of life. And it all starts with plants. And. Uh, Hmm. And, yeah, yeah, sometimes we do, uh, when, when, when we mention animals being eaten by others, we say poor this, poor that. But of course, um, okay, well, it's okay, the animals won't be happy being eaten by other animals and they probably suffer too. But, um, but actually in nature, no animal kills other animals for fun. They only do it for food. They only do it because they need to stay alive. So a snake would eat a chameleon to stay alive, not because a snake is cruel or because he's nasty. It's only because he's hungry. It's just his food. The same way that humans eat animals as well, yes. and they well, eat plants. Mm -hmm. They don't do that out of cruelty. However, humans do kill for fun. We are the only living things in the world that does kill for fun. And but none of these animals, 
No, no. That's a waste of life. Not to me, definitely, or to mm -hmm. you, right? Mm -hmm. We don't we don't find that fun. But if we look at the food web, we'll see how fantastically everything works together. And that brings us to the end of our feature for today. Here are all the wonderful people we want to thank. And uh, there's also office support from Steff. Thank you, everyone. Now, they missed your object. What was it? Tell us, Vic, what did you find? Well, they got the answer almost right away, but we had some other interesting oh, um, do tell. interesting for we, we've had hair, we've had oh. animal hair, someone said jellyfish, yeah. uh -huh. someone said plant, and someone said octopus tentacles. <laughs> but then there were people who said pufferfish oh. and porcupine. Uh -huh. and hedgehog, which is quite close because these are all prickly animals, aren't they? You know what this tells me? This tells me we have an audience here. We have a oh, lot yes. of children and, and people who are looking in who know about animals, who read, maybe see documentaries. That's nice. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. So the actual animal, did anyone actually get it? Oh, yes. OK, the animal was a sea urchin, of course. It's a small part of a sea urchin, the Ritza. <laughs> You may have not noticed it if you never looked at an urchin close because many people just take urchins out to eat them. Well, I'll, I'm going to ask you, like we took this photo, urchins are very, very actually beautiful. They have different kinds of legs and they're also animals to be loved because uh, if you're careful not to step on them, um, they're not going to hurt you. They just want to eat like everybody else. They don't want to be eaten. That's why they have spikes. Well, fair enough, right? And anyway, we've got so much to eat near the near the sea. We don't go without food, right? So just let them live, will we? Now, the caption game that we put the photo up last week. The sea urchin. We had a lot of answers. I'm I'm really really happy with many of the things you wrote because many of you told us messages about helping the sea and about uh, the starfish enjoying their not being predators or humans around. And then there was an answer that really made us laugh. And this is the one we're going to show you today. It was sent by Matthias Ajus, who's eight years old and goes to Stella Maris College, Xira. Oh, made a mistake there. They promised me I'd be a TV star. Mm -hmm. And we thought this was funny because he, he made a joke on the word star, right? A TV star being somebody important. That's really cool. And there you go. You are actually a star because you're starring in our program. Cool, Matthias. And thank you for all the answers and the creativity that you're sending us. If you really like nature and you want more of it, Birdland Malta has a young members group. It's called Club Huttaf. And we have this wonderful magazine for you, comes out every two months, full of nature subjects. When we stop doing this program, when school ends, um, where are you going to go for your nature? It's very easy to become a member. We have parents listening in here as well and teachers. Just go into the website. It's only 10 euro a year for membership. There's also family membership. We'd love to have you with us because you'll also be helping nature like we do. Today's caption. This is a wood sandpiper and it's obviously bending down to catch food, but it's paused there. It's just stopped for a bit and it looks like it's looking at its reflection. Maybe to check whether its hair is done all right. <laughs> <laughs> mm, could be. Or whether it's put on makeup all right. Mm, does seem to be having a better Well, let's not give them ideas. Uh, better not. So what do you think it's saying? Send us your ideas. We'll be putting up this link on the Dinya Wahda live teams page. Just click on it and it will take you to a page where you'll see the form and the photo, just in case you forget. I'll remind you that this is our email address, dinyawahda at birdlifemalta.org and that we have a Facebook page. If you want more activities and fun things to do and other games, please go onto our page and do like us. Answering questions. You had a lot of questions, did you? Ah, yes, yes, all about the, the program and wildlife and things. Really? Yes, yes. <laughs> we have children here and, and parents and teachers who Lovely love kids, nature. Yes. We'd love to Please see you. Keep it up. up. Keep your interest in nature even when you grow up, all right? Even when you keep, keep looking for them, keep observing, and you know you'll never feel alone. When you when 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 you will know what nature is around you. I agree. I was a teenager when I started um, with Birdlife Malta, 
and I found people like me and the magazine, and uh, it's been great fun there oh, since yes. then. Oh, yes. So until we meet again, it's thank you from uh, Bird Life Malta and the Dinia Wonder Program. And okay, see you next week then. Bye. Bye.